This is in the days of radio, at KNX up in Columbia Square. Madeline was sort of a big hotshot writer from Indianapolis. <laughs> she always wanted to be a writer. I didn't want to. That's be hard to be as a hotshot yeah. writer from Indianapolis. She came out. She had some reference from Thornburg or something to work at uh, NBC first. Yeah, but yeah. briefly. But mostly it was they had a, a they had staff writers at CBS Radio, which was rather unusual. And so we were lucky enough to be staff writers, and they teamed us together. Yeah, I was on the ushering staff. In fact, I was on the front desk during the war, control desk. I would sign people in and out. And then I went up to the transcription department and publicity, and I met Madeline, and I became a junior writer, and she was a senior writer. They used to bring people up from different, uh, different departments. Ernie Martin, the Broadway producer, started in their so-called continuity acceptance, you know, censorship yeah. program. And he was on the switchboard, too. Oh, was he? Yeah, I didn't remember that's where that. I met him. They put us together on a, a show for Steve Allen, who was just starting out, and it was called It's a Great Life, and we wrote sketches, and we found we worked well together, yeah. and we did another. Uh, these were West Coast radio shows at that time, and uh, on and they were on KNX radio. Couple, one couple next door, which is early domestic comedy, which is good training. And for we us. wrote on that, and uh, we said, "Hey, we write pretty well together," and we decided to try the so-called big time, which was network radio. In fact, she was writing with Larry Roman, and they thought, in case that shows a hit, they better split them up. Oh, that's right. Gave me to Madeline and gave Kathleen Height to Larry Roman. They all went on to do I big things. I Yeah. Well, it was called My Favorite Husband, Lucille Ball. Oh, yeah. yeah <laughs> Richard Denning, Gail Gordon, B. Van Derrett. And then that was just uh, just local, wasn't it, up and down no, the coast? No, no, it was network, but it wasn't sponsored. Oh. It was called what they used to call so sustaining. So that was your first working with Lucille Ball? Yes, yes. yes. Yeah, we, we made a list of shows we thought we could get in, and we wrote a, a spec script for uh, the My Favorite Husband, and uh, they bought it. And they said, now you're on staff. and. Uh, uh, so we had to quit in a hurry and, and I mean, and go on the staff of, of My Favorite Husband. And we were in such a rush that we paid Steve Allen to write his own show. <laughs> <laughs> and we wrote on spec. Uh, and it was $100. <laughs> Big money in those days. And I told Steve that not too long ago. He, he couldn't believe it. He for, we'd all forgotten it. Did you continue in radio, network radio, doing other shows? Or was this... Uh Oh, that was it, I think. I don't think. Yeah. Well, we wrote no. her show for two and a half years, and then they said, would you go into television? And to her. To Lucy. Yeah. And with uh, that show, she wanted that, they wanted that property with the, right. the bankers and bankers' wives. And, sure. and Lucy said, no, I will only do it with my husband, to which we said, and who is that? <laughs> he was out in the road somewhere banging his drum. Whoever he is. And thank goodness she insisted. <laughs> and she said, I want to go with uh, Jess Oppenheimer and uh, Bob and Madeline. And, yeah. and so uh, we said, I guess we better learn to write for television because it was very early. That was a, a remarkable beginning because the, the stories are that Desi Arnaz uh, insisted on film. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and, and realizing the potential of rerun, which was a kind of a remarkable uh, prescient look at the, at the medium. Actually, I'm not, he may have been uh, looking ahead, but the main reason that he wanted to do it on film well, CBS wanted them all, everybody to go to New York because in those days that was a big audience and then they used to get kinescopes, kinescopes and he didn't want to do that. He wanted to stay And he here. said, I don't want to do that and we don't want to go to New York. Yeah. And uh, so it would cost more to put it on film. And he said, well, we'll take it out of Lucy's and my salary and then we'll own the negative. And they said, who cares about the negative? And that's how he ended up owning the show. <laughs> Well, we wrote the sketch, the thing that she did with Desi that was used as a pilot. Yeah. They were going to go on the road, and they were, she was trying to prove to everybody that she and Desi were a team. So uh, That they would accept a Cuban. And but a Jess didn't want to fool oh. with it, and we said, well, we'll write it. And so then we did it, and that became a nucleus of the pilot, where she uh, comes out of the audience in the clown outfit with a cello, and that was the pilot right. that... Right. Um, now, there was a lot of objection, uh, or a lot of talk, I should say, about mm -hmm. Desi as being uh, Cuban, being Latino. Yes. Um, did you hear any of, uh, any of that? Well, we heard that there was talk, but yeah. they said, well, the people won't accept you being married to a Latin. She says, I am married to a Latin. What do you want? You know? <laughs> and of course, uh, we hadn't worked with him, yeah. so we wrote the pilot. We'd only met him. We wrote the pilot. Well, one version of the pilot, they, they called Larry Lopez was his name. Uh, I found one just the other day, and we yeah. changed and that. And we didn't know who was going to play the Mertzes. Yeah. 
No. That's we right. did the pilot without the Mertzes. They That's right, in. with Jerry yeah. uh, Hausner. And somebody told Bill Paley, he said, you got to have neighbors. <laughs> so we said, okay, we'll get neighbors. So they're trying to cast. We were starting writing the scripts because the show had been sold. And we yeah. would say, Dusty comes in that door if there's a if door there. Is there. One. And, and maybe there's a neighbor downstairs. Was, we don't know who that's going to be. It was, you know, very was, fundamental. Dusty did it because he was a performer, yeah. a, a stage person. Um, he liked to do it as a show. So he'd yeah. have his band right. or a small group from the band. And he'd do a warm up and come out and introduce everybody. They'd have a curtain in front of the sets. Yeah. And then they'd draw the curtain. And uh, in between these scenes, when people were changing clothes, uh, the band would play. Yeah. And, uh, but he went on straight through like theater. Just for, you know, I, remember, I read something recently about the show, and apparently in the very beginning they were really going to go straight through, like a stage play. Oh, I see. And not wait at all because they didn't think the audience would stand for it. Yes. And of course the audience, then they learned the audience likes the mechanics. Yeah. And somebody would come out and explain the cameras and introduce people while yeah. somebody's changing clothes. We didn't wait a long time, but of sure. course it would have been awful, particularly with all the, the props we used and the makeup oh, oh, and the yeah. craziness. To have to set that up in between was you know, it's impossible. I mean, you had to have a very strict schedule, mm -hmm. so you would you would uh, what pitch first? I mean, you would start start your own work mm -hmm. first. Yeah, we start on money, get the story with Jess, and then we would go back to our little cubicle and start to write like yeah. Sons of Guns. Yeah. And he would do so. We would come in on the the run through. Yeah. Oh, the, the, oh, the, the read. first read through. The I'm reading on a Monday. Read, read, read through at the table. Yeah, and yeah. make mm -hmm. any changes that night. Yeah. Very, very few changes, really. Yeah. Uh, and very few people today yeah. do lots and lots of rewrite, apparently. Yes. And on the loose show, we'd, we'd have been off the air if we'd had yeah. to go back and write for two or three days and fix it and all that. Because we were the only writers. It wasn't that we wanted somebody else to go do the script while we were It wasn't that we were, were that it. good. There was, it was called, you want to do the show or not? <laughs> When you were working, particularly in those early episodes, did you have regular contact with Lucille Ball and Desi Arnaz? I mean, in, in terms of the back and forth of building shows, or did you really simply go off uh, pretty much on your own and hand in scripts? Well, we plotted with Jess one day a week in right. his house or somewhere. And yeah. Jess was a producer of yeah. right. Lucy. And we would stay there all day until we got that story. He was a driver boy. <laughs> yeah. Want to go home? No, you don't Which go was home. very good because we, had, we did 39 shows the first season. We thought that's what you did because we came from radio. Mm. So. Sure. Uh, so there were the three of us, and we had to write 39 shows. So I'm glad he was rather tough with us and made us keep on a schedule. We quite often meet at Dupar's before we went to Jess's and say, any ideas to pitch this week? We'd go and say, Jess, here's a few things. He might have one. Yeah. And then we would pick one out and, and go at it all, all day long. Huh? And do the game, do the And we never, they never talked to Desi or Lucy. You might talk to, De later on we talked to Desi after yeah. Jess left, but never Lucille. Now this process was essentially talking back and forth, getting ideas. And we were sitting yes. in his office, yes. working yeah. it out. And, and then uh, I, for some reason, I was the one who then typed it up, and oh, we'd have a two She always has. Yeah. The women she's, always do that. She's always, always, <laughs> she's always typed the script, too. I really can't type. So, I was a pacer. So uh, um, we would do the storyline in maybe three or four pages and break it down to scenes, and we already had. I mean, and I would just sure. type it out. And uh, um, then Bob and I would write a script yeah. and uh, then turn it in, and Jess would do a rewrite. And meanwhile, he was... Uh, overseeing the editing and the casting and all that. One little thing about the plotting, you can or cannot keep this in. If I had been up later not feeling well, I'd be sleepy, I would pace down towards Jess, eyes open. By coming back, I'd close my eyes. I'm going to get a little rest. I'd turn around, well, how are we doing here? And then I got him. That's the way I get through the day sometimes. Uh, Lucy never liked to see the script ahead of time. And she, she wouldn't know what to do with it, really. She sat down at the table and read it out loud, and that's what she liked to do. And she never saw it before. With the other actors. Oh, of course, I yeah, mean, with yeah. the cast sure, yeah, and the sure. writers there that on Monday morning when we read the script. But we would go to Desi and Madeline and say, Desi, he'd be on the phone buying our care or something. He said, just a minute, kid. <laughs> and she would tell him the storyline, way down the line. He said, hey, uh, maybe I'll pick out the, take out the truck. Okay, okay, Yeah, well, this was after and Jess left. And, and sometimes Desi would be acting in the scene and he'd, he'd come <sighs> over the wings and I'd say, I gotta tell you the storyline to get it okayed. And um, talk as fast as I could. And he says, it's a little, a little long in the middle, but I'm, uh, you're fine. And he knew, he could have told me the whole storyline after he was very, very 
quick and very perceptive. And there's nothing he wouldn't pay for or do. Uh, you know, we, we were very blessed. Lucy would do anything, and he would pay for it. He would pay it, for it. Or do it. Once we'd we say, needed Bridget Bardot, he said, let me call her. <laughs> okay, oh, sure, but she, well, I can't oh, get her. Well, who else would you like? We're like okay. John Wayne was getting his footprints you, in the front of Grauman's Chinese in yeah. that time. And we thought, gee, maybe we, and they were in Hollywood. The, these characters were in Hollywood sure. at that time. So we said, well, maybe we get John Wayne to do a thing where she steals the footprints. And we walked down the hall and we said, Desi, can you get John Wayne? He said, let me call him. Hello, Duke, you know, and he gets him. And of course, we plug one of his movies, but. And Bill Holden, he just calls. He was uh, marvelous. And also, he was quick to see the possibility. Lucy would say, well, I don't know about that. And I, hmm, and the, all the, the physical. And he'd always say, well, honey, they, they tried it. We always tried all the stunts. And he'd say, they said it worked, so try it. And she trusted him, so she would try it, and then she would like it. But uh, he, he was a very uh, great to work for because he had such confidence in us. Yeah. Trying stunts got to be kind of tricky, too. We'd be in our office. One thing where they got handcuffed together in the storyline, so we tied our wrists together. And we're rolling around the couch, and people are looking from the hallway <laughs> saying, no, it's, it's OK. <laughs> you know, we're in here. Don't, don't worry about it. We, we and did we would it. learn a lot of things by we, doing it ourselves. We found you can't take your coat off if you're yeah, handcuffed. we just take your coats off. Who they'll, think? They'll You'd say, yeah, they take their coats off. They're getting ready for bed. Yeah. But they all bunch no, up in here. Yeah. And they, there's no way so, to come uh, off. So a lot of times, you would find things that were funnier than you ever thought of. And we uh, used Madeline to try them out because she was the woman of the team. I got to try out all those things. <laughs> Eggs in her blouse and <laughs> those sorts of things. But, well, Lucy was much more She's coordinated. She's a big trooper, Madeline. <laughs> yeah. She was much more coordinated than I am. And she would, of course, do anything. We were, you know, as I said, we were so new, we didn't realize how good Vivian was almost till we saw so, quite a while in. We'd see the shows, and Vivian's reaction, Ethel Merz's reaction to what <laughs> Lucy was doing made it twice as funny. Because well, you Lucy had uh, three dozen eggs in her blouse. We already set up a tango coming up. When she started to dance, you cut to Ethel, Viv, and she said, oh my God, she's got those eggs. And her anticipation and it's, yeah. fed the audience. They knew, they knew, oh yeah, this is gonna be really good. And uh, she was, they were all. And Frawley was always good for a laugh, just put a derby on him or a hat or a nightgown or just bring him in the room. A night, a night, night shirt, yeah, just, <laughs> he was solid. Were well, you there at the actual filming? Yeah, then we'd, oh, go, yeah. we'd go to the run through at night. Right. We'd do the notes on, on Monday, Tuesday, probably Wednesday. Wednesday night, so, yeah, afternoon. Yeah, run. We'd run and through. And, and we'd make notes, you make know. Make notes. Uh, sure. I assume that you heard the rhythms of speech <coughs> of Lucille and uh, Desi and uh, Vivian, Foley yeah. and Vivian Vance and so on. You, you, you were working with these same characters all the time. Well, you see, we had worked with Lucy for two and a half so years. So we knew her pretty well and did sure. a lot of her little tricks. We had no stuff. idea what Desi could do, but of course yeah. he turned out to be just gold because of the accent and the nightclub and all his, you know, things we could use. Well, Lucy used to tell us in radio, said, you kids ought to, she calls the kids, by the way, for a <laughs> long time, until she died. <laughs> so you kids ought to write for film because you write visually, even for radio. I, I, we weren't aware of it, we did, apparently. Yeah. As the, as the show developed, and I, I have a note here that, uh, that you wrote all of the episodes in a period of a couple of years. Uh, three years, first I three think. years, we, yeah. three, we three yeah. wrote. And then yes. we then just hired Bob Schiller and Bob Weisskopf, and then the five of us wrote. One year or two. Two. Maybe two. Yeah. And then Jess left, and then the four of us wrote. Yeah. People say, how'd you do it? We haven't any idea. We I worked say, all uh, the time. On Monday morning, Lucille put her hands down on the table, and there better be something there, sure. and there always was, you know. But <laughs> what, what, you know, nothing there would happen. Everybody who's worked on a on a weekly show, somehow you do it. Oh, yes. You just do it because it's expected. Yeah. Or well, you'll get fired as a pretty good incentive. It. We didn't produce. We were just head writers, right. and uh, um, because we really uh, were probably foolish. Desi said, "You want to produce?" We said, "We can't do that and, and write everything too." Sure. And keep your sense. It, and write sadly. that many shows. And I think about that time we were doing about. 30 maybe a year and uh, it, it was just impossible and we we like to write so sure. um, but then we would work with Sean Weisskopf get the storyline and they'd do the first draft and then we would do a rewrite and that yeah. kind of thing. Control. Jess had more experience than we did we were just kids and sure. Uh, sure. he had done some big shows on radio so they brought him over I believe Harry Ackerman who knew who had worked with him before. Harry was uh, vice president of programming, I believe, oh, yeah. CBS. Yeah. 
and so he brought He's in. He's one who wants to write the script on spec, too, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I went to Harry and I said, we want to write a script for my favorite husband. And he said, fine. I, I said, will you pass? He said, no. I said, well, okay. We'll do it anyway. <laughs> because we wanted to get started. So uh, Harry was very, very instrumental in hiring us. Yeah. The subject matter so frequently was daily life, the things that, that could happen to all of us or do happen to all of us, and then propelled and built into something. <clears throat> Uh, Those are our best stories, too. Yeah. One that, like, don't do business with friends or neighbors. Right. And then they, they sold they, the Mertz's their washing they machine. They sold it to the Mertz's because that was, why not give it to them? Or to well, everybody has had something like a car yeah. that you sell to your brother-in-law, and immediately the engine falls out. And he says, you knew that. Yeah. And, and you say, no, no, oh, sure, you knew it. You knew it. And so you can strike that chord. We did a lot of shows about money, mostly oh, yeah. not having it yeah. and what to do about it. And that's very familiar. Sure. We, we did it on purpose because, uh, well, we thought those are the best shows that people would relate and to. jealousy is always good. You can't beat yeah. jealousy. And greed. Yeah. Envy. Yeah. <laughs> so we say, you know, what, what emotion are we going to use this weekend? And uh, greed is great because no matter what you say, you really, really would like to have something that, also, you know. Our, our basic springboard, what does Lucy want yeah. this week? Yeah. Uh, the shows today have so many other characters, I don't know how they plot them really, but yeah. we're called What's Lucy going to do this week? And if we with her husband, with the merchants, with the she baby, with the neighbors, yeah. what does Lucy want? And that's where we would. And would the take other three off. people never ever said, "Where's my show?" No, yeah. never, yeah. because and, and she all, was a star. They're all so good in their own way. Oh, they were well, wonderful. Well, they were also integrated. In yeah, the oh, yeah, they were perfect. You write oh. down things when you're out too. I have a little card case I carry, and just write something down. Say, "Wait, this may be an idea." In fact, one night, Madeline and I met another couple to go to a movie up on. Hill Garden, Sunset. We said, where are we going to go? We pulled over, so we took a vote. What movie do you want to see? So, well, I said, I'll write that down. We'll use that later. <laughs> yeah. Well, just anything that happened oh, yeah. to us, yeah. or anything yeah. that happened to Lucy, uh, you'd come and in Jess and... Jess and you and I in the Derby. I yeah. said, I'll have a hamburger. Man said, I'll have a hamburger. Jess said, I'll have fish. Man said, I'll have fish. And so we just did a whole routine. Well, I did that, you know. Lucy you know, that sounds good. I wish I'd ordered that. And so Lucy, we had her do that. It wasn't the whole show, but it was a scene. I've sure. forgotten what it went into. Sure. Everybody you're, does you're that. All everything. writers do that. Yeah. You use your own. That's experience right. Right. and pretty soon when you're doing a weekly show you just use everything you can yeah. I get there I get the script ready Monday and, and you just hope you have an idea I mean everyone knows that when you go you say I, I hope we have an idea this week and yeah. I hope it works and I hope she likes it and all that we used to keep so. little stand-up books with possible ideas and we call it the good book and on that breakfast thing she Madeline would get it out we'd go through it one more time some did an idea that we threw out a year ago, Sunday looked good again. You know, yeah. just keep looking through those notes. Sure. Were you there at the actual filming? Yeah, then we oh, go. Yeah. We go to the run through at night. Right. We'd do the notes on, on Monday, Tuesday, probably Wednesday. Wednesday night. So, yeah, afternoon. A run. We had a run and then, through. And, and we make notes. You make know. Make notes. Uh, sure. The big thing is when she got pregnant, what, what were we going to do? Because you know, in those days, no, nobody had had a baby on the, on the television. I mean, it hadn't been done, so everyone was, Desi was frantic. He thought we were all off the air. You couldn't and have sex they were those thrilled. Days, they had twin, twin beds always, remember? Sure, oh, yeah. Sure. Twi they, and they were thrilled that she was going to have a baby, but, uh, but they didn't know what to do. It just was the second year, I think. And uh, it was sort of a blow, like, oh boy, what so do we do now? I think Jess and Jesse got together and uh, and they said, "Why not? We'll have it. I think it was Jess's idea. Well, we'll just do it." And so they got permission from CBS, and uh, I understand they had a rabbi and a priest and a minister to okay the scripts, and we just did pregnancy scripts. We did uh, um, all the funny things I, sure. uh, that women go through, and and we've had people say, "I was pregnant when Lucy was," and, and we couldn't say pregnant. And no, we had to say, couldn't <laughs> say the word. No. Yeah. Anticipate. Heavy with child and <laughs> anticipating. Uh, excuse me. We sure never we had any problems. We we were sort of clean little writers in any way. Lucy didn't like to do any kind of uh, sure. off-color material, so no. there was never any problem. But they did check those very carefully. And since she was going to have a cesarean, they picked a Monday night, and, uh, and we had to pick one and of the two sections. Then she had time off. We we did a lot of shows ahead, and then she had some time off and uh, had the baby. And we had to decide. <clears throat> like six or eight weeks ahead, whether it's going to be girl. a boy or a girl. Ah. In those days, they didn't well, have a way of knowing. Tape. You couldn't so we said, it you know, it was like your 50 50 chance. So we said, <laughs> mm, it's a boy. <laughs> That's what they wanted because they had a little yeah. girl. Yeah. And we were very, you know, we were lucky. And, and we understood that when it 
was a boy that everybody just in the operating room just screamed, it's a boy, and carried on. <laughs> and it worked out that way. One thing we, we did find, we were doing that many shows, yeah. uh, that we were afraid of getting a little stale. And uh, so one season we went, took them to Hollywood, oh, yeah. and right away that gave us, Well, you know, the baby was a big... Of course, that gave us a lot too, of And then shows. go to Hollywood. Sure. And Lucy wanted to see movie stars, and we had the trip out, and, and who was going to go, and Fred and Ethel couldn't go, and then he began the band. There were a lot of things getting ready, yeah. and they didn't own a car because they lived in New York. Now they had to get a car, and Fred bought a terrible car. With <coughs> all this getting ready, and then on the way, and then the shows where she tried to see movie stars. So I don't know how many, maybe eight. Probably, yeah. Around that. And yeah. then one year we took them to Europe. Well, we went to Cuba, too, for one point. Europe, yes, mm -hmm. yeah. We went to Cuba. Europe's to visit always Israel good. Then. Passports. Sure. Florida and Cuba. So birth license. Yeah, and so then when we thought, well, now what will we do? Uh, we moved them the, to the country, we moved them to the suburbs. I mean, yeah. In yeah. the Bell Holden show that we did, where they um, in the Brown Derby, Brown, they went Derby. Brown Derby, and then they went to the hotel, and she put on a fake nose to be. She was so embarrassed what she had spilled food all around. Was a very important storyline, and uh, so she pretended to. She got in Desi's makeup, Ricky's makeup kit and made a putty Change nose looks, and, yeah. and put a scarf on. And honestly, she's the only star I know that you could, you could say, and she'll set fire to her own nose. I wouldn't have done that. I, uh, and the story later, Lucy liked to say, yeah. you know, she would tell a story on maybe on the Merv Griffin show or Johnny Carson or something, and she'd say, and I lit my cigarette and I set fire to my own nose, and Bill Holden looked terrible, I thought he was going to faint. Well. It was written in the script, <clears throat> and but she told us many times it got such laughs that she decided it was true. But imagine if somebody <laughs> said to you, "Yeah, later on today, I think I'll set fire to my nose." You yes. say, "Oh yeah." Well, can you imagine any actress doing that? <laughs> and she loved it. Anything you'd say, well, you. One time we put Vivian and Lucy when they were living in the country together in the second series. Yes. We put them in a shower. But they couldn't get the door, and the water and they couldn't, came up. They, the, the, she didn't like the plumber, and she fired him. and said, "I can do that." The drain was closed, and the door jammed. And these two women were in a shower with water; they could not touch the ground. And yeah, when I saw that, I thought, "Oh, yeah." <laughs> they never. They said, "Well, if you heat the water," and uh, Lucy said to Vivian, "They said they tried it, and, and we didn't try it." She went down she to get the bottom and tried to fix the I mean, shower. Things that in the movies it would be a, a stunt double. Sure. And she would sing a sheep to sleep, you know. She worked with animals. Work with animals. She elephants. Anything. <laughs> did you ever? Uh, did you ever use other writers? Did you ever use freelance writers? Not. Or, no. Or, not on that. Yeah. Not on I Love Lucy. Yeah. We did. Um, well, the two Bobs. Yeah. yeah then the later. For a while, we called three Bobs and a babe. Somebody uh, called us. Uh, later, yeah. when we did uh, uh, the, the Lucy, Lucy show, show we, some we, we did buy a few freelance. Yeah, Fred yeah. Fox and Ellenson and. Yeah, that's right. Oh. Well, he was he was on the road with the band, wasn't he, at the time that this? Uh, well, he came to Florida. And I think he was 16, and then he got into being in a little band, and then he was. Did uh, he go to New York and probably do his act on stage? Well, he did Bob yeah. Lou Bob and uh, Bob and was yeah. a big hit. And then Too Many Girls. Yeah. And then they, uh, George Abbott. I just read something about George Abbott. Saw him in in the stage show Too Many Girls and said he mm. I want no no he saw a nightclub act and then put him in the stage show. And then they brought him to Hollywood to do the movie. To do the movie. And yeah. that's when he met her. And yeah. Lucille Ball was in the movie, I think. Yes, yes. Oh, yeah. She was the ingenue. Yeah. She had, she was an actress of stature at yes. that time. Yeah. Desi really invented the three camera system yeah. that started all this. And uh, uh, he called uh, uh, Carl Freund, who was a big cameraman at MGM, oh, yeah. and they had big meetings about how to light it so that you could shoot a close shot and a and a, like a two shot and a longer shot all at the same time. Did Carl put cameras on wheels or was that, was that his invention or somebody else's to move around? And the dolly? The dolly? I think he invented the light meter. Yeah. I think. Carl Freund, yeah. 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 But um, then you had to figure well, how could you show it in front of an audience and how uh, they marked the things on the floor, you know, where the camera should be and they had a camera cord. It was all a, sounds very simple now, but it wasn't then. Early on, they marked all the cameras the night before for the run-through. With the tape down. Yeah. Some cleaning man came in and said, well, what's all this tape doing here? <laughs> oh, and ripped up all the tape. 
from the whole night before. That's an episode. Yes, yes. <laughs> it was an, an incredible. He was a decision. very bright person. Yeah. He doesn't get all the, the uh, credit yeah. that he should. We, we always talk about him because he was uh, really very underestimated. He was terribly bright, terribly good at business, and he had an empire before he finished. He was, I keep telling you, he was great at working with writers because he never said, oh, that won't work or that won't cost too much money. He said, oh, that's a great idea. And then what about this? And uh, so he, we worked in such a marvelous atmosphere. Yeah. Uh, he, he, he was so positive yeah. about things that, it, that you just felt you could think of anything. Whenever he'd do a movie, like, my, like, well, I won't, I won't say it wasn't yours, mine, and ours. It was one of the movies they did. And he'd, he'd say, maybe you can punch this up a little. So we did some scenes for the movie. And when we saw the movie, Lucy goes in the house as one character, and she came Something out. Something comes out as she's Lucy for a totally time, and then back. It was really <coughs> awful. It was one of the movies that didn't do too well. But uh, he was always counting on us to, you know, like, uh, oh, Bob oh, does that, back Jack Benny see, does sure. that. He flew us back to see Wildcat, too, in Philadelphia. Yeah. We had any notes, but the, the guy wouldn't accept well, them. Well, we, we put in jokes, and then the, the writer hated them, of course. But uh, it, it, you can't do that. You know, it yeah, doesn't work. Sure. But uh, We I didn't want to work too much when we weren't doing Lucy. Well, it's we only time had, off. like, four or five weeks yeah. off. Yeah. So yeah. it, uh, and we were tired. In the year. Yeah. yeah. Yes, yes. We used to hope the president would speak on Monday night, so we'd be very <laughs> empty. Then we got another week. Good save old, it. Save the show. Good old Franklin. Yeah, we <laughs> love those fireside chats. Did you ever get uh, comments from from a uh, network or uh, anyone o outside of the group? You mean criticism of yeah, the script? Yeah. Well, uh, Jess handled all that, and then yeah. Desi handled it. And one of my favorite stories when so we never dealt with that, which was again marvelous. All we had to do was go off in a room and write, yeah. and uh, that kept and us write, fairly and busy. Write, and write, and write. <laughs> but when we were doing the mothers-in-law. Um, which we did later when Desi went out on his own. Um, we we did a script that we were rather pleased with, and you know in those days the advertising agents you'd have one sponsor and an advertising agency they had a lot to say about it. So the, someone in the advertising agency called me and said uh, I don't think the script works at all, and I wasn't really very used to that. And I said well we thought it was good. The person said no I didn't work. Throw it out. You know. And we're gonna throw it out. So uh, I don't know what to do. I called Desi. I said, well, we do. We write a new script. And he said, never mind. And we did the show, and it, it turned out very well. And I later learned from somebody else that he had called this person and said, don't you ever call the writers and say things like that. So you see, we were very protected. We yeah. didn't know any better. Uh, yeah. Well, they just wouldn't have it. You, you were not yeah. allowed to say anything or use any kind of language. Uh, at all. Uh, we didn't care. We didn't right? mind that because we were kind of prudish ourselves, <laughs> yeah, quite frankly. And they had to yeah. be in a double beds. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Single beds. Single beds, yes. I mean, single beds, yeah, yeah. two single beds, but even though they were married. Uh, so everything was very strict in those days. By the time we did Alice, uh, years later, yeah. you could say, in each show, you could say, I could get three, three hells, hells in the dam. dam. Uh -huh. and, uh, and be a little freer. They come and, uh, all away. They've changed quite a bit. It was in those days you had one sponsor and an advertising agency, and yeah. and I think things had to be a little cleared with them. After a while, yeah. when the show was a, if you're a hit, they don't they, <laughs> they don't, don't tell you, you too much. If you're a, if you're a flop, I look out. Everybody has a way to fix it. Philip Morris uh, being the single sponsor, and then didn't come back for the next season. Uh, and the and the story was that despite extraordinary audiences and mm -hmm. high ratings, that they weren't selling <laughs> Philip Morris cigarettes. I've heard that. And uh, yeah. that, but that be, those things, anything connected with the Lucy Show was a story. Anything that. Mm -hmm. yeah, we anything couldn't we them? couldn't say lucky when we were on for Philip Morris. <laughs> yeah. Boy, I'm lucky to why we had to say I'm fortunate. Fortunate. We, we, <laughs> we, had, we were had never lucky. Saying lucky for years <laughs> afterwards. Can you imagine? <laughs> <laughs> Do you get any? Was there fan mail? Was there anything that guided you, or was this? It was I don't think no. The ratings. The ratings, I guess. Yeah. Well, no people seem to like it, and yeah. Uh, no, I don't. Rem we, there must have been fan mail for them. We never saw. Yeah, it. sure. We but didn't know. Nothing about content. Uh, also, you did it pretty far ahead in those days yeah. because the post production took longer. Yeah. And um, <clears throat> so, 
by the time we found, <laughs> maybe they didn't like it. We were we had written you know six more shows. Yeah, we started out. We had eight too. scripts, and people said, "You won't have that many." We said, "Yes, we will." And eight then down to six, and then, and then <laughs> toward the end, that we were saying, "Well, here's a storyline. You can build the sets." Well, like everybody does. Oh, sure. Yeah. sure. During that time, did uh, did CBS ever come to you and say, "Gee, this show is so hot. It's doing so well. Uh, we want you to do." Uh, something else. I mean, did, did they initiate any more activity for you? Today they would do a merch spin-off probably. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They said the merch sure. move downstairs and get their own apartment, you know. Yeah. But no, um, no. No, I don't, yeah. I don't remember any of that. Um, some wild reason, we did one season, then we did a show in the summer called Those Whiting Girls with Margaret and Barbara Whiting. I think it must be out of our minds because we didn't have a lot of time off, but. Yeah. Was that um, the very first year before they I don't think thought about so. reruns? It was, it was I guess. later. It was called but Do a Show in the Summer, like you, radio. You put a summer show on, and maybe it would be a hit. But we used to call Desi the Cuban arm because uh, we said, Don't have lunch with him because <laughs> he's going to talk you into something. And one time we, we were going to have quit? lunch, and he's, we said to each other, Now, don't promise. We're dead tired. We're don't gonna, promise. We're going to quit, sir. Yeah. Take a year off. We said, We've got to have some time off. And we came out of the two hours later, we promised to do a pilot yes. and a movie. I signed up for two more years. Just, he had charm. He was boy. very charming. He used to call you amigo, put his hand, arm around you, and you hey, were partner, you were sort of hey, partner. Partner yeah. and amigo. He was something. When, when the, uh, the original I Love Lucy ended its run, was there, a, was there a break in time before the next Lucy show? Or did you just keep going? Well, the, the I, I Love Lucy show ended, and then you went, the, the next reincarnation really was the Lucy show. No, it was The Hours. The, the Lucy Hours. Lucy did The Hours for three years. That and was pretty soon, wasn't it? I forget I he said. I think it was the next, yeah. Yeah. next year. Yeah. And then when they went off, then Lucy went to Broadway to try to do uh, Hot Spot or Wild Cat? Wild Cat. Wild Cat, And they, had, they separated by then or divorced? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So that was a whole, then she came back from that, and then we did the Lucy show. Right. Now that was that was late in the game. Here's Lucy, wasn't it? Yes. That was, that mm -hmm. was the, the latest. But you were still working regularly on that show. On Here's Lucy. Um, yes, the chronology. Um, yeah. Hour longs we did uh, the Lucy show out in the country. We did. We then we then we left. Yeah. Went and did Mothers in Law. Mothers in Law. For Eve Arden. Well, that was a little later. Well, so. that was between those. Then back to Here's Lucy yeah. though. Yeah. Well, I got married and I had a child, moved out of town, and there was sort of a hiatus there. Then well, like here's Lucy had uh, Richard Burton and Liz as guest stars, and Lucy called and said, could we come and do one show? Because yeah. we're good old writers, apparently. She so then, of us. well, she felt secure with us, I guess. Then we went back and did uh, uh, a great many of the Here's Lucy. Yeah. yeah. During the time that you were on, on, uh, on Lucy, the Writers Guild got the, con got residual, got the concept of residual. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think I would be here if we had residuals? Yeah, you are going to talk about that, right? <laughs> I want to hear about no, this. No, no. What, I, what I'm saying I think the country should take up a collection from Madeline <laughs> and me. It's a bucket piece. The timing right. was bad for you. Yes. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. Well, who knew? I mean, yeah. Of course. No, who knew anything? Knew. And who knew that the shows on film would be repeated? Uh, yeah. 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 But well, I, rem I remember when the Writers Guild went on strike and finally got residuals. Every time it ran, you got something, yes. and whoever was explaining it said, for instance, if you had written I Love Lucy today, and Bob and I went, mm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, They had to bring up that as yeah, an example. Yeah.